Hello, this is Melorian, and this is going to be the intro video to the Out of the Basement tournament I'll be going to this weekend. So it is a five-game tournament over two days. Uh, it is 2,500 points. Uh, there's also going to be 40K and War Machine there. Of course, I'll be there for Fantasy. And uh, this is going to be kind of an interesting one because it'll be the first time that I went to a tournament where I didn't pick my own army. I put this up on the Google Plus page. Uh, the Warhammer YouTubers, and I said, hey, you know, you guys get to pick. Am I going to be using my High Elves, or should I go for Orcs, something else? And you guys really surprised me because you guys pretty much all voted, hey, well, let's say, that, let's just say go with the majority said, let's go with High Elves. And man, as soon as I saw that, I regretted it because I was not ready. Um, I had the little bit from the slow grow, but really... I did not even have enough to get to 2,500 points. It wasn't just not even painted. I just didn't even own it. And the lot of stuff I owned and painted, I didn't even want to even use in a tournament list. So that's really why the ballot ports have been a little bit slow the last little while. Because I've been painting like crazy and building. And I still have to do the basing. After I do this video, I'll finish the basing. But really what I'm doing this video here is I'm going to go over the tournament package, explain, explain to you what's going on. I'll go over my list, explain how it's supposed to work and how I think it's going to work then with this package. Now, the very first thing to say is that it is, of course, have to be painted, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is also the second last tournament before the grand tournament. And this is kind of a big deal. This is a thing where in the province there will be a big grand tournament and the top 20 players are going to be invited. And so when it comes down to it, everyone's get these last few points to get in there. Right now I'm sitting at 19, so I think I'll be okay, but <clears throat> definitely I can't just drop the ball. Um, but really uh, how it looks here is it's going to be a non-comped event. It doesn't really matter what you have in your list. You are going to be scored in each game on your presentation out of five, uh, your sportsmanship out of five, you are going to, uh, of course, be voting for best sport at the end and all these things. But this really has a pretty interesting twist that you don't see in other tournaments. And that's that best overall, like always, will be, you know, combined scores of painting, sports, and battle points. And usually, though, best general, straightforward, right? Battle points. Whoever got the most wins. Well, this is not like that. Here, for these guys that out of the basement, they use the Axe of Valor. And this is a, a vastly different system. I've almost seen nobody use this except for in War Machine. But really how it is, it's a list of tasks you have to do over the game. And for the vast majority, you don't need to win to get these. If you just do these things, you get the point. So... You know, I could almost lose all my games, but if I hit all these things, I win, I get best general. And it's one of these things where it's, it's really designed to change it. So I'm not making a list that can just go in there and like tear everything apart or whatever, or it's a wood elf thing where I'll shoot, shoot, kill a couple of units and run away and win by massacre because I kill 100 points, you killed zero. This is the thing where, well, no, you have to go out and you have to achieve these objectives. You know, clearly to do a lot of these things, you will need to be beating your opponent or be controlling the board in order to make this happen but uh, doing the objectives is worth infinite more than actually winning the game so let's go over these here and out of all of them the first one I'd say is my least favorite because you really have no control over this one and that's going to be killing a special character uh, it's worth one there's a few of these that if you do them and win it's worth a, an extra point but the big thing here is that you can go through your five games, maybe not see any special characters. That was the big deal that happened last time. Like one person out of the whole tournament actually brought a special character. Because, I mean, looking at this and with this list, you don't want to be giving points to other people. So you wouldn't be taking your own list. So that one can be very hard to get. But, hey, if nobody gets it, whatever, right? We're on the same equal ground. Uh, the next one is to kill or run down a BSB, so that should be all right. Just got to make sure to either get in there, kill that unit, or snipe them out. Uh, next one is to make a unit panic and flee from shooting or magic. Again, this could be hard. Like, who knows? Maybe you face uh, demons and skeletons and tomb kings the whole tournament, and it's just impossible for them to panic. But, uh, you know, this is just something here where it's, it's encouraging you to have at least a little bit of shooting in your list. So... You know, I, I was able to score this one last time. Uh, the second one here is also kind of tough. Uh, and this one is to kill two or more terror causers in a single game. So again, this really 
means that you have to be up against two monsters or somebody took the item that made them cause terror or something like this. I actually wondered, uh, especially with Anthony's last, last video there, that if somebody cast a spell on there so it made them cast or cause fear or then to terror and you killed them, would you get this? I think so. So I obviously people wouldn't be casting that then. But anyway, uh, the next one is to finish the game with your whole army in the opponent's deploy zone, except for war machines. And that's pretty damn tough. You need to really just say everything's going to be moving forward. Even in this game, if you have archers that normally stand back and shoot, shoot while everything else goes forward, no, come on, guys. Everybody's got to go. So that's something you definitely have to plan for. And it's one of these things where. Uh, game to game, you need to plan these things out and say, all right, this time I'm going for this, this time I'm going for that, and need to know when's going to be that game where, come on, archers, you get going to march every turn to get up there. Um, the next one here is kind of more uh, control thing here. We have to be controlling three or more table quarters at the end of the game, and you do that by having an intact banner uh, that you control in that zone. And that will be a problem for me, but we'll get back to that. Uh, last one here, or not the last one, next one here is end the game with your general within three inches of the table center. So this is the thing where you can't just be hiding your general way back. He's going to have to move up for this. Uh, next one is commit to using no fewer than four power dice for every spell in the game. And this one normally for my orcs and goblins is easy because like, well, I six dice everything. So whatever, no big deal. But, uh, with my high elves, this could be a little bit more of an issue. Um, Next one here is commit to always challenging with your characters. Never refuse a challenge. This is not the unit champs. This is actually the characters, so they have to get in there and fight. Uh, next one is have a unit in the army no one else is using from the same army book. This is the thing where last year I took a stone troll because, hey, it's 10 more points. It's going to be my single troll throwaway unit. Nobody else had it. It's a point. It's really a thing where it's forcing you to take not internet lists and actually build something on your own. And also, of course, than trying some of these rarely used units. Like, hey, maybe I'll take Snotlings because I can get some meager use out of them and I should be getting this point as well. But it's, again, something that's hard. And, uh, hey, you know, if another Orc and Goblin player would have taken a Stone Troll for the same reason, no point for either of us. But I, I understand the idea behind it. Uh, next one here is after both armies are deployed, uh, Allow your opponent to redeploy D3 of your units uh, before rolling for turn one. And they can't be changing their facing or, you know, frontage or anything like that. But that one is one that can be very dangerous. I mean, with my orcs and goblins, it's like, okay, well, your trolls go on the far flanks, and so now they're going to be feeling stupidity. And it's one of those things where you almost want to pull this one when you're up against a nice opponent. And they'll be like, oh, we'll just move that guy a bit to the side. And it's like, okay, that's great, right? That's easy. Uh, this is one where if you win the game, it's another point on top of that. And now the last one says, for one turn on turn three or later, do not move any unit by choice. And uh, this is also worth the next one if you win the game. This is one where usually you just... Fit it in wherever you're kicking butt, right? Because if it's one of those games, you're tabling the opponent and, uh, you know, it's like, okay, it's turn five and you're pretty much dead. I'll just stand still for a turn. So it's, this one isn't that hard to get. This is one where sometimes people forget to actually do it. So that's what it is there. So now let's go over my list. First off, we have my general. Baka! And I am going with this one here. It is going to be a level 4 Archmage with the Talisman of Preservation, the Book of Hoath, and a Moon Dragon. So this is uh, really the whole list is going to be the Monster Mash. I talked about this before with Kieran Dunleavy. And really, normally before, I would never take a level 4 on a dragon just seems kind of crazy. But now with the whole thing, we'll still have a four plus ward. Whenever she casts at least one spell, she'll be putting a ward uh, going up to three plus. And then she'll be giving a ward save to the dragon as well. I think this will be very solid. Um, one thing I was worried about after I built this is that, sure, yeah, if a cannon hits her on a three plus, she ignores it. Um, but the other thing is, what if just a bunch of archers shoot at her? Because she has like a six plus armor for being mounted, but otherwise she's toughness three. 
So that could be a real issue. But uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really interested to see how it's going to work with her flying around, getting her spells off. Of course, with that Book of Holoth, I can be two dicing my spells all the time. And that's why I was saying it's going to be an issue where I have to do at least four dice because like, oh, it's almost designed to two dice these things. But hey, if for one game I need to do that, that's no big deal, right? Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not afraid to dedicate to combat. You know, especially if it's just one combat that I know I'll win the first round, they won't be able to kill her probably in the one round. So expect her to be going in when needed. I'm not I'm not afraid to dedicate my characters. Uh, then we're on to heroes because, hey, that lord was 620 points. And I'm taking a uh, dragon mage. So second dragon in the list. Uh, this clock's at 390. And what this has is dragon armor, enchanted shield, and my dispel scroll. So I have the scroll in the list. And with that together, that means that this mage actually has a 2 plus save. So this person here, I have no problem taking, you know, spearmen or archers or whatever, because, hey, I have a 2 plus save, and the dragon's a dragon, so it's going to go in there and kill stuff. And I've never used this model before. I've never used the other model before. But I've been hearing some really good things about people have been trying out this dragon mage uh, build. And uh, so, yeah, again... Going to be going through there. Uh, even though you can get the Sword of Ruin automatically, I'm still going to be going to the Signature and going for the Fireball probably to kill off some chaff. But uh, hey, you never know. Sometimes that Sword of Ruin might actually be worthwhile. Next hero. Now, I painted this and it's back in Edmonton. I'm in Fort Mac right now. So I'm going to show you my unpainted one. And I'm going with a Noble on a Griffin. Now this Noble is going to have a Lance, Heavy Armor, Charm Shield, and is really just going to go in there and support with the other uh, models as well. I mean, obviously, Toughness 5, no armor, is bad for a Griffin. However, if you do it in tandem with the Phoenix, spoiler, I have a Phoenix, um, then basically with them being minus 1 strength, you're basically Toughness 6. And the Rider is Toughness 4. So, again, this is only clocks in at 235, not too much, but it can... Obviously, you go in, kill lots of guys, and of course, I know one of the best ways to kill blocks with monsters is just throw in all those monsters, tons of thunderstorms, kill them dead. So, that's to be fun. Now, the next section here is the core, and now the core is where I have the biggest issues because there's what I'd like to do tactically, and then there's what I had to do given the time I had and the models I had. When I first talked about this list with Kieran Dunleavy, it was all reverse, just... I, the whole idea with this monster mass type thing is that I have no center for you to attack and I'm all over the place, right? Well, I only own 10 Reavers. The taking the time to buy them and they take a long time to paint, I had to really kind of change my list. So one of the things I have is I'm going to be having uh, 25 of my Spearmen. I'm, I'm not even going to try to get this thing zoomed in, but... Uh, they have a banner, and that's it for command. They're really the guys are there just to give me ranks. If I need to break something, they're there. They can hold off the chaff, and they kind of felt my core. That's that's really what it comes down to. If I owned a bunch of something else, I'd probably do it. But hey, they're not that bad, and they're my ranked unit to take away ranks. The next unit I have here is kind of an odd one, and it is 20 archers with full command. Now... Normally, you'd probably say, well, why don't you just take in like 10 and putting that command somewhere else? What the, what's the idea here, Malorian? And my worry here is that even though there's all these objectives to get, there's always still the mission as well. Um, and actually, that's one of the things I forgot to mention here. One of them was to have uh, at least three games where you complete the mission. That's another one. So you never know if Watchtower will come up. And Monster Mash is horrible at Watchtower. So... If I have it, I'm going to be starting those archers in there. They have a champion so that if they are trying to kill me, I can challenge out the character so they don't kill lots of them. And then as long as I survive that long, the monsters are going in, and I'm going to try and kill whatever is around there. But they'll be in there, shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, they have a banner because I need more banners. Because, again, what happens if I got Blood and Glory? I have my Archmage. I have... My banner and my spearmen. Well, okay, the archmage is worth two. Banner and the spearmen, banner and the archers. And my breakpoint is three. So if one of these things die, I lose. So I need to have at least one other banner here. So one of the things to talk about with that is I really played with the idea of making the dragon mage of BSB. 
uh, in the end because of how the points work there. I had to really choose between either the BSB or the scroll, and I really think in the end the spell scroll is the way to go. I actually was kind of playing with the idea too of making him a BSB with the banner of the world dragon and just really make him a jerk going in there for magical things. But again, I'm really, I mean, I only have 25% and I got two monsters in there, right? So there just isn't the room. So that's really the idea of the archers. Of course, the, the musician is there to have the shenanigans with buildings and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, really... For the most part, too, these infantry, even though they're small and weak, will be very well supported because there's freaking five monsters. Um, and by the way, that's just a spoiler as well. But, you know, you can't really just run up and kill these things because, oh, there's only 20 archers because there's also two dragons, a griffin, and let's just say, now, I got two Frostheart Phoenixes. So, do 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 you got to see me run one of these guys before. I have two now. So those guys really pack a wallop. And I mean, between all those five monsters, I don't care if you're a massive horde of night goblins of 100, those thunder stomps are going to destroy you in, you know, a couple of rounds of, of, you know, combat. So that really is going to be the main thing going around. But my core is not done yet. I still have more points. And so what I do have is, of course, I said I do have the two units of Reavers. Um... You know, I thought about converting, because you do pay an extra three points per model to get those bows on there. But really, that'd be a lot of converting to change them the way it is, because with these models here, the quiver is like right in the horse, the the bow is in the hand. Like, you cut off the, the bow, I guess, from the hand. Uh, there's one, the champion, where it's actually like on the saddle as well, but I... <laughs> Really, the whole point here was to fill up my min core so I could get stuff otherwise. So that's not that big of a deal to me. It's just, okay, fine, it's out there, it's good. Um, then we get to my rare. I have the two Frost Art Phoenixes, like I said. I have an Eagle Baka. So that guy is going to be some fun. And I also have a, a Repeater Bolt Thrower. Now... And this is the old guy here, by the way, the old metal one. Now, that one as well, I think the, the nice thing about taking that, again, it's the thing where I just, at the end, I had a few points, so what should I throw it into? And really, it's a thing where I, it'll be nice to have some shooting. It'll be nice to have a little unit there that, you know, hey, you can come and try and kill me, but with its little multi-shot, I might just kill off your throwaway unit as it's coming towards me. And of course, it's hard to charge and take out these things when there's freaking monsters everywhere. So it, it should be nice as well if there's like enemy monsters or something I need to try and like whittle down before I send in my guys. That can help help there too. So really, that's the entire list. That's 2,500 points. It's really designed to be just everywhere, right? Um Really, with, with this not being a case, with me not needing to get these objectives, I could really just avoid, with most of my core, monsters go in and clear out some chaff and some of the easy stuff, fly away, I win. You get zero victory points, I got something more than 100, piece of cake. Um, with having these archers and the spearmen, I will have to be a little bit more careful to cover these guys and be a little bit more defensive, but uh, hey, it's just the way it is, and... It'll probably make for funner games too. Like I said, if, if all I had was the Reavers and they're running around and shooting and the monsters are killing whenever I want, my sports scores might be very low. So, yeah, I think overall this is going to work fairly well. Uh, I'm not really sure at this point. Really, I think at this point I'm a triple threat. I'm going to try for the uh, best general and go for these Acts of Valor. I think I have a good shot at going for best overall because, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure I can score a Massacre when I want it. Um, the real risks I have there, of course, with all these monsters, if I'm up against Empire, Dwarves, the bunch of cannons, things can go bad very fast. Luckily, I have the Reavers that can vanguard and get to those war machines quick. I have the Eagle, but still, if you have a couple of turns of shooting, I can lose a crap ton of points really fast. So we'll have to kind of see which way that goes. If I have a bad game like that, I'll really start focusing on these. And of course, hey, I'm a nice guy. I've won best sport before. Might get that one. I'm not getting best painted. That's not on the table. Um, but looking at these things, like I said, the real ones that I think I killed myself on is I, I can't do the one where I get the three table quarters because I only have two banners. Um, 
I thought about maybe dropping one of those commands from the archers and putting a banner on the reavers, but the main thing there is that I don't want a banner on my reavers. Like, it's one thing to do this for this tournament, but I plan to own these guys and play with them for a while. And if I had, like, a bunch of reavers, be like, sure, yeah, one could be a banner or whatever, good to go. But I just, since I don't know when's the next time I can get my hands on some reavers, because it used to be really easy before, but now that high elves are popular, finding those starter set reavers is getting a little bit difficult. But either way, I'm just going to say, hey, I'm not going to get that one. I'll go for everything else. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So overall, as always, the biggest things I'm pushing for is just to win more games than I lose. Um, one of the things that's going to be kind of fun is that I was starting to feel really bad. Because it's one of these things, like I said, where I'm going back and forth from Fort McMurray. And uh, She-Ra, my daughter, is always crying when I leave. It's a sad thing. It's really tough. And it's like, well, for this month, I have two two-day tournaments. So it's like, ah, oh, both of us are kind of like heartbroken. So the second day, what I'm actually going to do, where there's only two games, is I'm going to be bringing her with me. We're going to have a stool. She'll be right there beside me. She'll be rolling some dice, playing with the dead guys and all this stuff. And we'll see how it goes. You know, I've never done this before. She's only five years old, but I think she'll be all right. I, I would say I guarantee that she'll get through the first game, no problem. Will she make it through the second one? I might have to be trying to push it. That my biggest worry there is like I'll be in the middle of a game and daddy, I have to go pee. Damn it. So we'll we'll see what happens there. But the big thing too is that this army is not like a slow grudge type army. This is gonna be a fast thing. Like I have I have no worries whatsoever. I'm not that I'm not gonna finish a game, right? Because it's like, well, it's my turn. Fly, 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 a little bit of movement, uh, magic, magic, shoot, shoot, done. Right? Like, for the most part, if there's a combat, I am dominating the combat and uh, going from there. But, uh, yeah, definitely something that's scary. Uh, one of the things I just realized is that for the one thing we have to kill two terror causers, I got freaking five. So, uh, I guess guys might actually want to be facing me. And, of course, I'll be looking to take advantage of that terror as well, right? If there's these little units on the flanks... Charge them, try and get, make them fail those tears, go off the table. But overall, like I said, trying to win more than I lose. And something else I just learned that I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not, but Dan from Mini Warm Gaming has moved down to Calgary. Calgary is just three hours south of Edmonton. So we always go to each other's tournaments. Now, my tournament out of the basement is going to be this Saturday. He just said in his last video that came out, a little while before I just made this one, that he is also going to a fantasy tournament this Saturday. I am part of the committee that knows, puts together or talks about the different tournaments in the area. And I don't know about any other tournament in Calgary or anything like that. So unless it's some small one, I'm pretty sure Dan from Mini Wargaming will be at this tournament. So it'll be interesting if I get to meet him. Even better if I get to play against him. Have no idea what army be using. But hey, should be a lot of fun. And of course, as always, down below, post down your thoughts on the tournaments uh, package, your thoughts on the list. And most importantly, how do you think I'm going to do? So thanks for watching. And five battle reports will be coming up this weekend. Plus, I'll be doing one, an extra one, with another tournament organizer from Warhammer, which is the next tournament. But we'll talk about that another time. So see you then. Bye. I was working in the lab. Monster Mash. Monster Mash. It was a graveyard smash. It caught on and